Congratulations to Europe, more specifically Amsterdam, as they come through with the first spot Bitcoin ETF, thereby beating the United States by forever as they actually get it launched. And also we'll take a look at how it looks like the SEC may be pushing their decisions for the spot Bitcoin ETF here in 2024. So again, looks like Europe is doing the right things. They've already got legislation in place. They are already very crypto friendly. And here's another example of how they're wiping the floor with us because of one regulatory agency and their inability to talk about and move forward with the crypto process. So Europe's first spot Bitcoin ETF is going live. Fidelity Digital Assets manages its custodial responsibilities. If that name sounds familiar, well, it really should because uh, Fidelity also filed for a spot Bitcoin ETF uh, on Wise Origin Bitcoin Trust refiling. They did that on March 24th, 2021. And of course, they're waiting for their, their first deadline, which hasn't hit so far. But we'll see how it goes here in the United States. So here's what's going on in Europe. So the spot Bitcoin ETF is going live on Euronext Amsterdam, Jacobi Asset Management, launched the Bitcoin ETF, which is a, I thought this interesting, a green friendly digital asset fund. It aligns with the EU's sustainable finance guidelines. And this is, I got to be, it has to be a lesson for you. If there is an obstacle, you can fight that obstacle as much as you can, or you just say, you know what, we're just going to go around this obstacle in the way that, that, we, that is best for us. So in this situation, that's exactly what they did because we have the same ESG policies here and there's a big problem, but uh, in Amsterdam, they're like, well, let's just go around it. How they do that? Well, the asset manager has added a verifiable renewable energy certificate or REC to the ETF. The fund employs external data to measure the energy usage linked to Bitcoin in the ETF. Jacoby then buys and retires corresponding renewable energy certificates, a recognized tool for buying green energy. Proof of these RECs is digitally logged on a blockchain, so it's provable, allowing ETF investors to verify the eco-friendly assertion. So I got to tell you, uh, bravo to this fund, bravo to the EU moving forward. You guys did a great job. And what did that do to the price of Bitcoin today? Zip. Absolutely nothing. So I know people talk about, you know, how this ETF is going to be great. And maybe in America it is. But today, in the last 24 hours, we're actually down 0.5%. But we're flat, 0.0 .0 at a whopping 29,200. And everything's pretty much across the board, except for Dogecoin. 24 hours down 5%. But hey, what are you going to do? So that's on that side. Now let's take a look at what's going on in the good old US event. Here's all the different businesses or ETFs that are being filed. There's plenty of them. And ARC has already had their second dime deadline blown through. Now they're waiting for the third deadline and, of course, the final, final deadline in January. But everything kind of happens around March, March 15th, 14th, somewhere around there. So just keep that in mind of 2024. And I was tagged today by my friend uh, Simon Dixon. <clears throat> and he says, hey, USA really does not want their retirees to protect themselves from USD inflation before Bitcoin's next halving. And, of course, he tags me because we have a bet. And the bet is, is I believe in all honesty, that uh, this ETF will not be approved. I've talked about this three or four times in the last three or four days, so I'm not going to go over it. But this is essentially what we have. And for this piece of information, uh, I again think to myself, well, in all honesty, that's not a no of what's going on here. So the piece itself says, uh, this is from Bitcoin News, bitcoinnews.com. You can check them out. Good site. Great stuff. It says, breaking the SEC delays all ETF approvals to early 2024. Now, I couldn't find that specific article over there. I'm sure it's there. I just maybe just didn't, didn't look hard enough. But uh, this, I've, I actually saw this today the whole day. And the first place I saw it was over on Whale, at Whale Chart. And it says, breaking SEC delays all Bitcoin ETF decisions until 2024. I actually went to the SEC website. I Google searched it. I can't find anything. Now, maybe you can help me. But I'm not going to say that this is exactly what's going on. This is an example of where you should be a little bit leery about the news that you're getting it. Of course, people are like, where's your, well, this one says sauce. And I, th I think they mean source. And really just comes down to where is the source? No one really has an idea of where this actually come from, except some Twitter account, which says this is what it is. So even if it is, it isn't or isn't, it really doesn't really matter to me. Again, it's the narrative. But if it is true, it does lend a little bit of credence if uh, if they're going to push it all the way to 2024 and they're not even going to go through the deadlines, then what's the point? And maybe, you know, we'll see if uh, 
I'm actually writing this, but I gotta, I gotta stress this enough. I would rather be wrong and rich than right and poor. If I am wrong and the SEC, then the SEC approves the ETF, everything's good, I'm happy, everybody's happy. And if I'm right, well, that's bad news for me anyhow. So let me know what you think about in the comments section. Will this ETF be approved? Hopefully it will, but I have my reservations. And then also, I found this interesting uh, today. First of all, congratulations to the XRP community for being so strong throughout their uh, lawsuit with the SEC and beating them so far. So congratulations. But uh, this was uh, a report, SRB, which is a Shar Sharia Review Bureau, works with financial institutions seeking Sharia compliance for businesses around the world, licensed by the Central Bank of Bahrain, has released a paper on the XRP ledger concluding that XRP can be deemed Sharia compliant. That's pretty big. First of all, what's Sharia law? As you may know, I am not Muslim. And also, as you may know, this is a bad idea right now to talk about uh, religion or, and or politics, which I've already talked about uh, at ad nauseum yesterday as far as the uh, politics. So now I'm gonna throw in a little religion and make sure I can get everybody else to hate me. But uh, here we go. So Sharia or Shariat is a body of religious law that forms a part of the Islamic tradition. It is derived from the religious precepts of Islam and is based on the sacred scriptures of Islam, particularly the Quran and the Hadith. So I thought this was a, a pretty big win, honestly, for the XRP and XRP army and, and Ripple itself, because that means that, of course, uh, more people that are within the Muslim faith can go, well, this is compliant with Sharia law, which is what I just talked about. However, I had to ask that question on Twitter, and I said, can Muslims hold and transact in crypto or not according to Sharia law? And there's a lot of, <laughs> a lot of answers. But basically, it comes out of this. It's very nuanced, and I am not going to get into it. But basically, it comes down to this, is that uh, according to Sharia law, again, I'm not a Muslim, but any kind of gambling tokens... I don't think that will be in compliance or any kind of yield bearing accounts for crypto. So I could see then why uh, XRP itself uh, would be considered uh, compliant. And then, so there's that one. And then also there's another one called uh, Islamic coin. When I was doing the research for this, I came across this one, Islamic coin. And uh, this one, it was interesting because it's become compliant with Sharia law. And then of course, I thought the, the interesting part here was that there's 1 billion Muslim internet users and uh, 720 billion. If they get 3% of that, that's a 720 billion market cap or 1.2 of five and 10 and 20. And of course this one is being touted by a lot of sheiks and things like that, but I, I don't know. I just thought it was interesting that there's coins out there for that. And before anybody asks, nobody paid me for uh, any of this, this, uh, this talking or XRP hasn't paid me or Islamic coin. Just, that was interesting of uh, the new, different nuances of crypto. And then to wrap it up, gaming and Web3. Now I believe that Web3 and gaming, blockchain gaming is gonna be huge in the next bull run. And this was big. This is from uh, Sami Darith, a digital asset consultant. I'll link his Twitter account in the description. But he says Zynga announced its first Web3 game, Sugar Town. I was like, I don't really, that doesn't mean much to me, but this piqued my interest with 200 million monthly active users, this is the catalyst Web3 Gaming needs. And I was like, 200 million? And, I thought, and at first I thought, I thought to myself, I'm like, is it 200 million of Sugar Town? Is that it? But that hasn't even launched. So I had to go to Zynga, the website, and this is Zynga, which makes sense, right? And I want you to, to think about this. 200 million monthly users. And now they're going to put a Web3 game in when maybe you could earn an NFTs or tokens or whatever else it is. But I want you to notice something on Zynga. Do you notice any, any AAA ranked games? Like, you know, super great games and any of that? No, you don't. There is a big market for casual gaming. They're, this is their feature games. Farmville, Harry Potter Puzzle and Spell, Games of Thrones, Words with Friends, Zynga Poker, a racing game, and something dragon, goofy game, whatever. So look, I know people like, they kind of like chuckle at the whole gaming thing, but uh, gaming's huge. And I've talked about this many times, and I've, I've given statistics, but I haven't really showed you. This is from Exploding Topics, and it's actually from Statista. And it talks about how many gamers are out there. Well, globally, you got almost 8 billion people, 7.8 billion. Correct me in the comments. That's what I've, as I understand, it's how many people we got in the uh, world. But how many gamers are out there? Globally, there are approximately 3.09 billion active video game players. Because remember, even though you may be in the third world country, or maybe wherever you're at, first world country, whatever, a lot of these different places, you have access to a smartphone. 
and some places have access to the internet. Now, a lot of places do not. That is true. That's why you don't have 7.8 billion people walking around playing games on their phone. So they don't have access to it. But right now, 3.09 billion active, active users. By 2024, they're expected to be 3.32 billion gamers worldwide. Asia has 1.5 billion gamers. And of course, same thing over here. And then gamers by region, Asia outstrips everybody. Then Europe, Latin America, North America. That's why like in the comments, I see this like, well, who's a gamer? In North America, which is 46% of my demographic uh, who watch this channel, yes, you, there's not a lot of gamers here. But in Asia, Europe, pretty big. And then also a couple of things to finish up. Age group, 18 to 34 years old, 38%. That's a, a pretty big diff. And then lastly, how many of these figures translate to gamers on a global scale? Out of those 3.08 or 3.23 billion people, almost 2 billion people are casual gamers, 63%. The AAA ranked games of action, shooting, racing, adventure, great. But where you're gonna make the most money, and I think the next big thing for Web3 is gonna be games like this. And it's gonna look at like a game like this, which is Sugartown, the game they were talking about. Again, no one reached out to me or paid me, so don't ask me in the comment section. I'm telling you right now, if I, if I get paid, I gotta tell you. That's why I have sponsors like I trust. However, Sugartown, it's an interesting game. What the heck is it? Maybe something to look into. What is Sugartown? Web3 gaming platform, transmedia IP created by ZW3. We created to bring fun and value to players while helping to push the Web3 space forward. And now this is it. What? Because I thought Sugartown was just the game itself, but Sugartown is a Web3 gaming platform that's designed to go wide and deep with games and lore, blah, blah, blah blah, 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 blah. So this looks pretty good. Maybe it's something you could check out. Maybe a big thing, not for sure. But links in the description, you can check it out. And lastly, sometimes I think I'm talking to myself, unfortunately. And yesterday we talked about Coinbase. And specifically, we talked about the earnings report. And it came out that the majority of their earnings came from subscription and services, subscription like Coinbase One. But did you know, I didn't cover this yesterday, not in length, I should have, that 36% of Coinbase's net revenue is from USD and staking. And I said very clearly here, Coinbase can't stake your crypto unless you leave it on the exchange. What's my third rule? Right underneath me. Don't leave any, 0% exchanges. Don't leave it on exchanges. And I said, I guess I'm talking to myself because people aren't listening. And there was a response and I blurted out that this individual's Twitter accounts, I don't want them getting bombarded with, with comments. They said, you know, people have been trusting Microsoft or Amazon or Google with their data for years. Why not trust Coinbase? Only trust your cold wallet stuff is overrated. And I'll just leave it with this. This is why I'm stepping down in the next bull run. Because the things that I talk about, I told you that people are just gonna blow over it and they're not gonna listen to me. And it's just gonna be repeating the same cycle again and again and again. So when the bull run comes, I have a video in the description. It talks about when I'm gonna sell 80% of my crypto and that's pretty much it. I'm gonna step down. I will come back to this channel during the bear market. But at that point, I can just see what's coming. There's gonna be a massive bear market. It's gonna be huge. People are gonna make a ton of money. They're gonna get ahead of themselves. They're gonna think it's gonna go up forever. They're not gonna to listen to the rules that I laid out that have protected me and a lot of people. And it's just gonna be a big S show. So why stick around for that? So not to be a wet blanket, but uh, that's it for today. So everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. And sorry for uh, my dog, Cutie there. She just got a little tired. So that's how it is. But thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.